to license it. and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew, and on the bench today is a 1 to 52 scale Matchbox Model A Ford produced in 1984. It came out in a variety of different tempos, minus the Pepsi Cola edition made in Macau. And as you can see, the paint is chipped, the roof is MIA, the front grille is missing a headlight, and the wheels have had it. Time for a total makeover with some special TLC given to all of these areas that are screaming for attention. The Model A, fondly referred to as the A-Bone among hot rodders and customizers, was the Ford Motor Company's second market success after its predecessor, the Model T, which had been produced for 18 years. The new Model A was available in four standard colors, first produced on October 20th, 1927. In the first three months, one million Model A's had been sold, and by late July, two million. In March 1930, Model A sales hit three million, and there were nine body styles available. Production ended in March 1932 after 4,858,644 of them had rolled off the famous Ford assembly line. You saw a plastic base on this model and the metal body is being drilled out for the posts and two screws are fitted in there and everything is starting out wonderfully well. The two metal parts go into the paint stripper together. And I close off this little uh, container to keep the fumes in. And we'll just let that sit and let science do its thing while I wash up some of the plastic parts. Over here in Europe, these classic cars are referred to as old-timers. And that's great news for me, because as long as I live here in Switzerland, my wife will never call me an old-timer. <laughs> A little bit of gunk on this plastic windshield, but it's not too bad at all, so I'm just going to hit it with some 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper very lightly hardly any pressure applied here and I dip it into the pledge revive it which is just a floor polish but modelers use this on their plastic windshields to give it a nice shine and long lasting life I wick off the corners and I notice there's a little drip inside so I just touch that with the corner of a paper towel it's gone and I cover it up and I'll let that dry overnight before I handle it again. The Model A came in a wide variety of styles including a coupe, standard and deluxe, business coupe, sport coupe, roadster coupe, standard and deluxe, convertible cabriolet, convertible sedan, a Tudor sedan, standard and deluxe, town car, Victoria model, town sedan, station wagon, taxi cab, truck, and commercial. If Henry Ford wasn't big on color, he sure had a lot of body variety. Down to the bare metal, and it looks like this, and so I always take a little bit of time with the wire brush attachment on my Dremel, and look what happens. 
after just five or six minutes. That's why we wear safety glasses. Those little metal shards fly everywhere. But I have switched attachments to this Scotch-Brite tool and it does a nice sort of final effect on the bare metal stage. Inevitably there are some casting imperfections and bad lines that need attention and so I use these little diamond files. They come in a variety of shapes and here I've got a little triangle tool and you'll notice quite a bad spot here on the back bumper. But it really doesn't take very long to file that down and then some fine steel wool all over the metal parts and it's coming out looking very good but that steel wool sure makes a mess and so I take a moment probably two or three times during these makeovers and clean off my work area because that gets everywhere if you don't attend to it prices for the Model A ranged from US $385 for a Roadster to US $1,400 for the top of the line town car. The engine was a 3.3 liter water cooled inline four with a displacement of 201 cubic inches and this engine provided 40 horsepower with a top speed of around 65 miles per hour or 105 kilometers an hour. <laughs> wow, I bet that felt really fast when you were in a Model A. I hit the metal casting parts with a little bit of degreaser and then coat of primer. And this is my last opportunity to look it all over very carefully and see if I've missed any nooks or crannies or pit marks or casting lines. And everything appears to be in real good order. We had a missing roof, and so with a small piece of styrene that I've cut out, rounded the edges. It's a very easy fix in this particular case. Here I have taped it to the cutting mat, and I'm not trying to divide it in two, I'm just lightly scoring the top, and this, I hope, will give it more of a 3D depth effect after I paint it. Now I had a particular paint scheme in mind so I went to the local hardware store and out of uh, more than a dozen different red possibilities I got this one. It's not a fire engine red or a Ferrari red. It's considerably darker and it's exactly what I wanted for that bottom part of the casting. And on top, this is not white, it's not snow white, it's more of an ivory, almost a cream color. And I'm not sure if you'll pick that up if you're watching this on your smartphone, but it's uh, also just about bang on with what I had in mind, and it's going to give a very smart color combination, quite a striking contrast. Ultimately, I decided to go with the smallest styrene tubing that I had for this sort of a rib effect on the roof. And after masking up the body and shooting the cab, I had to do a little touch-up by hand underneath the lip of the overhang. Now, I'm quite pleased that I found an old-timer in my boneyard with these more period-correct wheels so I'll swap them out and now I need to give attention to this wonky headlight. Again thanks to the boneyard I found this much nicer looking gold grill with both headlights intact. Here's the original plastic bumper that I cut from the deformed grill and I just need to add two new support arms to that to hold it in place also styrene and I'll prime this and paint it with a semi-gloss black again for a, a striking 
color contrast with the ivory and the red. And here's the main upgrade in the whole project. Yeah, you probably had an idea where I was going with the colors and and we're moving way up from Pepsi Cola to Coca Cola and so I expect many people will weigh in in the comment section now with their favorite but I'm definitely a Coca Cola man and if I collect anything I've got a serious collection of Coca Cola memorabilia bottles and tins and coolers and containers and banners collected from my travels all around the world. It's quite best. I make my own decals and I found this sort of uh, vintage looking poster to go on the side. And after positioning it, this is where I use a Q-tip and I'm just pushing out any of the water that's underneath this so it's perfectly flat. This clear lick is called Decal Set and I put that especially around the edges. It's actually going to melt that away and you won't see any kind of seam at all. Custom license plate and a couple more decals on the engine cover and the back doors. Two coats of clear to give them long lasting protection and we are ready to put this back together. Did you know that the Model A was the first Ford to use the standard set of driver controls with a conventional clutch, and brake pedals, throttle, and a gear shift? A rear view mirror was optional. And the Model A was the first car to have safety glass in the windshield. I thought you might be interested in that as I put my little windshield back in. careful here with the paint although it has set overnight and it's been clear coated a couple times I still handle it very gingerly in these final stages I already know those screws were dry fitted and so they're just fine and there's only one piece remaining and that's the uh, replacement front bumper ended up changing those two support arms from black to red. And super glue and fresh paint, ho oh, ho, watch out. You, this stuff just seems to go everywhere and I was very, very careful here and had no troubles on this final assembly step. And it doesn't click into place, it just lays there, so I've got to remain stationary for about 30 seconds to let that grab. Let's have a closer look. There's the roof with the ribs on it, and the, the shadows pick that up. I'm very pleased with how that turned out. Nice paint combination. Look at those new wheels that I traded. Makeover number 60. decals look great, the bumpers in place. Well, I'm just absolutely pleased with how that turned out. Here's what it was before. Chipped up paint, missing headlight. The roof is gone, the wheels just don't look right for a 1920s Model A. Well, let's see how it turned out. Wouldn't you agree that's a pretty sharp upgrade? I'm totally satisfied with that, with the period correct wheels and the paint scheme combination. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not give it a thumbs up and become a new subscriber to my channel. As I put this in a gift bag, like all my makeovers, they go back to the Goodwill store as gifts for kids. I hope you'll come back again real soon and often. It's coffee time.